All right, let's discuss this further. And joining me in the studio to do that is market analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Thank you for your time, Mokhtar. Yes, let's begin this way. What do you think could have led to this um, non-interest by investors in claiming their dividends? Well, you won't say there is non-interest. Uh, yeah, you could say non-interest in the sense that most of the investors that were not paying their dividend field, um, they, they got weary of the market, they were no more satisfied, they went there thinking they could get capital appreciation, but unfortunately they were, they were not getting the capital appreciation, so they didn't think that some of the dividend they felt was too small compared to what they invested in. That is one. Then two, secondly, some of them at that time used different addresses. Some that you take it to this address, there are no more there, and there's no way to follow them up. Um, then at that time also you, you need to know, at that time there was no type of service account that was uh, accepted to collect um, dividend and so those could have been most of the challenges that they had and most Nigerians being, uh, were not interested in e-dividend because they, they were not too sure, they were, they were skeptical about the, the procedure thinking look sometimes this um, brokerage uh, registrar will say they have sent you your money, you will not see it so you have to go to them. So there was. A, a, a type of um, people were not so confident about it. I think that was what mis mostly was responsible for the challenge of claiming of this. Okay, dividend. so why should regulators uh, worry about this, really? Well, they should worry about it because there's not an enemy law that allows some of this money to go back to the system. And so, so those money were just hanging somewhere up to like 90 billion, like you mentioned in your introduction. Yeah. So they, they, they were a bit worried. And again, that does not give confidence to the market. And so a lot of issues then and then you have to look at uh, sometime again when you go to claim this dividend for the registrar after six months they ask you for your uh, for your s uh, signature specimen and most of them their signature specimen will not be found there so they will have to go to the bank to get e dividend uh, to have um, 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 to get um, um, for them to get account clearance to be able to claim those dividends by the time they bring this spec sig signature specimen to the bank, I mean, some of them didn't have current account, so they have to go to the bank. The bank will tell them to open current account before they will be able to have signature specimen to take to the registrar. Right. So most of us, they, they just go worry and they ask you, so how much was this money compared to how much I've invested it? So all those were, were, were partly what caused um, this type of situation that we saw in the market. Okay, so paperwork we know has been eliminated, given rise to the e-dividend device. Now, what has the regulators done to ensure that this e-dividend e can be well embraced. Uh, like you said in your introduction also, you see they, uh, they are working hand in hand with the bank. Sometimes you can go to the bank, fill your e-mandate form and submit it to the bank and the bank will take it to the various registrar. Um, SEC also have come up with a platform whereby investors can put their names and once you put your name, it appears where you have dividend, the houses that you have dividend, then you can go and claim those dividends and uh, made it mandatory that by 2016, by June this year, there will not be any issue of a paper dividend to any investor. So investors are forced to be compliant that most everybody must be on the e-dividend platform. And again, the, um, the central bank also have made it easy also that um, even if you have a savings account, also you can pay in check, you can use that for e-dividend platform. So I think they've done very well now. Though okay, they, so in your assessment, I'm sure you've worked with many of these investors and you've been in the market for a while now. Has it been, has there been, what's your assessment generally? That's what I think the, um, the assessment has been good. Investors, some investors don't even know that they had dividend. They just saw the mail come to them and they say, oh, I didn't even know, I didn't even know. So some of them are working out, sending it. But it's a process because um, the, the registrar also must be sure that um, you actually own those dividends. So they'll still ask for your signature specimen. And so if you don't have that signature specimen, they tell you to go to your bank to get a signature specimen. So once you bring that signature specimen to them from your bank, then you're on the individual um, platform. And platform. that makes it easy. I mean, you don't have to worry about um, 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 going to collect your dividend for principal. And again, they, they are, the good thing about it is that SEC have made it mandatory to the registrar that 24 hours after you declare, I mean, after your, your, uh, 24 hours after your day of payment, all these investors must be credited with their dividend. Otherwise, the, the registrars will be sanctioned. Okay, but is this the best practice? I mean, how do other markets handle issues of unclaimed dividends? I, I think um, when it comes to unclaimed dividends, now there's a legislation aspect that have to go and with it. And sometimes the legislation we have about unclaimed dividend has been, for me, it's oscillate because sometimes they tell some uh, some people that their parents have this dividend. Maybe your your parents passed on like 10, 15, 16 years ago. 
you, after 10 years and they didn't claim that dividend, you have to go back to the to the company, not even to the registrar okay. to begin to write it's to claim back into the, the company. company. So, and I think um, that's an area they have to look into to make sure that this this remains with the with the registrar, especially with the Security and Exchange Commission, so that they can be custodians, so that when these people come and do all the paperwork and they're satisfied with it, they will be able to claim their dividend. But a situation whereby the investors after 10 years cannot claim their dividend again because uh, if you've not claimed it for a while, then they now pick it, pass it back to the company. And so you have to go back to the company to begin to say, ask for your dividend. Well, and some of these companies do not even have a, a, a shareholders a relation department for you to even lay hands with them on how to claim your dividend. Okay, let's, that takes me to the issue of demutualization at the Nigerian stock market. Does it have any form of linkage with this? I mean, because I know that exercise has been in the limbo, if I would use that word. That, what, what, what is really I, happening I, in that area? I, I don't think it's in the limbo. I, I think um, um, this, this has to do with the Nash, uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, they are trying to make sure that they, got, they get it right, they get their act together, so that when this thing comes up, into every challenge that will have to be associated with it will be sorted out. I, I think they are working on it, and I, I believe strongly that by before the end of this year, that will come into effect. It's not that it has not come into effect because now they pay, uh, most, have, most shareholders are bringing out their share certificate for them right. to be demolized. Okay, so what if eventually happens, what effect? What, I mean, no, there must be gives, a very it, strong it effect. Give, it gives credibility the to the market. Okay. It, it gives credibility to the market, especially in terms of investors. You can sell, you can buy and sell your, your shares with immediate okay. effect. And again, SEC has also worked with the Nigerian Stock Exchange, there whereby you can even have settlement directly into your current account, even when you deal with the brokerage firm. You know, before it used to be when you sell from the brokerage firm, you have to go to the brokerage firm to collect check and pay into your account sometimes take time. Now, check and mandated the brokerage from that within 22, I mean, the three, three days clearing, the normal speculated trade clearing days, these. these stocks, these shares hit the investor's account. It no more goes into the stockbroker's account, broken account. But again, that all depends on in investors that want to take um, um, want to take this platform. Some investors still believe that they want to plunk the money back to the market. So SEC asks them to fill a form whereby you, you, you exempt yourself from there. And then again, they're trying to minimize um, um, a situation whereby it's, um, investors are not able to recover their money, saying that the stockbroker did not pay them their money after they sold their money. They've done a lot, and also now it's easier for you to follow your share because you have to have a lot on your system, system, on your phone. When they buy, they tell you how much. Those days, the stockbroker tells you how much he bought this share. But now with the alert system, it tells you how much you bought the share, and even when he sold, it tells you how much he sold. And sometimes, again, investors have said, ah, I didn't tell them to sell, and because the alert system is proper, they, they notify the, the retailers. All right, so it's more of a transparent system now that yeah. we have at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. All right, l let's link this to foreign investment in the market, and let's take a moment. Let me uh, take the story now. Africa's economy is growing rapidly, and Nigeria occupies a key place in this. It will not be out of place. To say that Nigeria is strategic market for all manner of foreign investment. Capital importation represents the total value of foreign direct uh, and portfolio investment into Nigeria in any given period. And that uh, is related with the latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics, which shows that Nigeria's capital importation in first quarter of 2017 was estimated at $908.27 million. Well, this represents an increase of 27 0.75% in relation to the second quarter of 2016, where capital importation stood at $0.710 million. But in the third quarter of 2016, capital importation was $1.8 billion. And then there was a decline of 15% in fourth quarter, when it's, where it stood at $1.5 billion. Well, it further declined by 41.36% in the first quarter of 2017. Now, the third quarter of 2016 saw the highest level of capital importation for the year at $1.8 billion, while the first quarter, 2016, witnessed the lowest of level uh, of capital importation at $0.71 million. Now, Nigeria imported the most foreign uh, capital from the United Kingdom. Uh, that's just for us to know in the fourth quarter. But we'll talk more about this, especially in relation with the capital market after the break. Do stay with us on Business Nigeria.
You're watching Business Nigeria and we're still looking at foreign investment in uh, Nigeria on, on the African continent. And I've been speaking with Mokhtar Mohamed, market analyst. Yeah, we've been talking about the capital market. Now we're looking at it, it, it with focus, especially on foreign direct investment into the Nigerian capital market. But what do you have noticed that Nigeria imported the most foreign capital from the United Kingdom in the fourth quarter of 2016, followed closely by the Netherlands? and the United States. Now, let's look at the, the, the capital market. So far, in your own assessment, what is foreign direct investment like in the capital market at well, the moment? Well, uh, at the moment, it's a little bit high compare, um, compared to what it was in first quarter, second quarter, because the foreign investors were skeptical, mostly when it came to this currency issue. Um, adequately pricing of the Naira at that time, then the two-way exchange system. And then the delisting of Nigeria from the JP Morgan indices also did not help matters. So the investors were actually not coming to the market because they saw the exchange rate comparable, um, the, the parallel exchange rate and the or exchange rate they have to be forced to, be ent to enter the market was very wide. So most investors, and again also the repatriation of their fund also was not forthcoming. So they, they stayed in the fence because some of them that were already there trying to repatriate their fund was an issue. But um, of recent, after the CBN came up with their new currency policy, whereby they not um, allow invest investors to, price, to, to, to have a special platform, whereby their own co they, they can price in their own at a, at a different price, depending on the market scenario. And also, they were able to repatriate their fund. So the confidence started coming in, and that is what is playing out in the market at the moment. Because foreign investors are beginning to see confidence, are beginning to see the two-way exchange system, a special platform whereby invest foreign investors that come to the market instead of um, the normal interbank rate of about 350 they are allowed to change between 380 400 so okay well, we do know that the effect of fdis cannot be overstated in any economy and of course the nigerian capital market but aren't we weary of the times where we have this global crash yeah you see, because the i do know we had such a such an event in 2008 thereabout are we weary really of such times? We, we are very weary, mostly the players, we the players of the capital market. And it's unfortunate that Nigerians don't see the capital market as a platform whereby they can grow their wealth. Nigerians don't see the capital market as a platform whereby they can begin to increase their earnings, begin to see it as a platform for retirement purposes. Seems to believe in our capital market more than the Nigerians. So we have a challenge there. And, um, it, and also that was due to the crash that happened in 2008. Eight. So the foreigners are actually taking opportunity of the low valu valuation of our, of, of our strong companies, especially companies that have strong fund momentum. Before the beginning of this year, it, some of the companies, especially the banking uh, uh, um, sector, was pro price, trading at the all-time low. And up until the foreign investors begin to come, come into the market, now you could see that open event. Some of them have grown by 60 something, some, some of them have even grown by 100%. But now, the, the, the challenge is that it's the foreigners that are even taking advantage of this, thing, not the, 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 Nigerians. the Nigerians. So the Nigerians are going to come, the only time the Nigerians get interested in the stock market is when they begin to see that there's a capital appreciation sure. and uh, every noise about <laughs> when the stock market. When there is a boom. When there is a boom. So <laughs> Nigerians don't take a, 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 a position when there's, 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 there's most of the be in the market. And actually, you, you, you don't, um, te uh, technically, you don't come to the market when there is a boom. boom. You come to the market when the market is down, then you get strong it's, fundamental. It's a long-term investment. Long -term All right, very briefly now, very, very briefly, and probably in one sentence, what's the, the ratio, FDI and local investment? As it stands now between the, um, 60 to 40 percent. 60 to 40 percent. All right, thank you very much for your time. That's still very okay as we have it. Uh, maybe later we could have a better one. Maybe the I local so. market will take... Over. But I think if the pension and pension fund administrators are able to come into the market like they are planning to come, then we'll right see that then. shift. All right. And market analyst Mokhtar Mohammed, thank you for your time. Always in a pleasure. Nigeria.